And mama spend her last and send you the class. Never you ever play. It's a competitive world for low budget people. Spending the time while earning a nickel. With no regard to who it may tickle. My cup is full to the brim. I could go on and on. The fool has never been to. Good evening and welcome once again to Plain Talk. My name is Christopher Ram and we will be speaking this evening VAT and Education Part 3. Part of the reason for the selection of the topic for this evening is that the government made an announcement following the consultation which the government had with members of the public, parents, administration, administration and students last Friday at the National Cultural Center. This evening, we have coming back with us, Mr. Jonathan Yearwood, uh, who was here last week. And he was speaking as a, a student, tertiary level student in one of the private establishments. And he's joined by Ms. Mohini Matan, who is a parent of a child going to May's school in Georgetown. I welcome you both thank to play talk. Good evening. And Jonathan, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Now, you had a very extensive discussion with two members of cabinet. In fact, there was a third who was chairing the, the session last Friday. We had a commitment that the message would go back to cabinet and that cabinet will make a decision. Mm -hmm. That decision was made at cabinet on yesterday, Tuesday, and it, uh, Dr. Roop Narayan, the Minister of Education, was quoted in the Stabbrook News mm -hmm. about the results of the cabinet discussion. I'm taking you've both read the decision by cabinet as reported in the Stabbrook News. What was your reaction when you heard or read the news? I think I'll give Mohini a chance to start with that. You're not normally like that, you know. <laughs> I, I think know. I'll go give ahead, a chance. Go on, go Mohini. Ahead. Okay, take one. Um, I don't think whatever decision he made, they made it on behalf of, of the parents and of the children. Which decision are you talking about? Like, no, like he We're was... We're talking about cabinet decision. Yes. He, w he was... When Friday, when he, he was when saying... When he, you mean Prime Minister Prime Nagamoto? Prime Minister Nag Nagamoto said that, you know, they're going to take <coughs> it to cabinet, right? Yes. Which is Friday, um, Tuesday. Yes. But when he take it to, to the cabinet, we already know the, 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 way the things that he, he said to us, right? We already know that he's not going to really do anything or they're not going to say why anything. Why do you say that? Why, do you, why, why don't you trust? Why didn't you trust? <coughs> But here was the Prime Minister saying, I'm taking it to full cabinet. Cabinet has sent me here. Why do you believe that the Prime Minister was not going to take a sincere message to cabinet? Because they already know that they, they don't want to take out the foot, this 14 percent back in education. They already, they pre-medicate. They pre-medicate. He go there with this, with, this, with this instinct saying that, you know what? This is what we are going to do, prolong them and keep them there, showing that, you know what? Um, uh, let it come, we're going to pop it out of them. When you and say them, you mean the parents and the students? The parents and students. We are not puppets. Jonathan, was, that your, was that your impression? That is, that is my sentiments. Um, I, I will go a stage further to say that I personally think that the decision was made since February. The, in the introduction with the Minister of Education said that Cabinet had discussed it already. So this was not the first time that VATAN Education was being brought to Cabinet. They had discussed it already. They had already reached a <laughs> foregone conclusion that they were going to do nothing about VAT on education in 2017. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And then they decided that they were going to hold so-called consultations to give persons an opportunity 
to hear their views. But they were not interested in our views. And the Prime Minister's attitude, that came across clearly that he was not interested in listening to our views. That he was just trying to pull a hood over us, to fool us into thinking that we are doing something that we might have an opportunity mm -hmm. for them to change the decision on the following Tuesday with Cabinet. Mm -hmm. So the actual Cabinet decision on Tuesday was no great big surprise to me. It's a huge disappointment, but it's not a huge surprise. One of the things that have been noted is that the Prime Minister himself turned up late for the session. He was not there, yeah. so he would not have heard all the comments. comments. How could he, did it strike you as odd that the Minister of Education, whose field, mm -hmm. whose ministry, this issue really revolved around, was not the one to answer the questions, when in fact, Chairperson Kathy Yu said, we will take the questions and the minister will, will, rebut. will answer, or yeah. not rebut, she said he will answer. Yeah. Because I think Kathy Hughes did a, a, a decent think, job. Yeah, she, yeah, she, she was. She but she so Nagamoto was late. How could he have responded to all the points if he didn't have preconceived notions exactly. of what he was going to say? That's what I'm trying to say, is that he was premeditated, he knew what he was, what he was going to say, and he knew what... It, they, they, uh, they wanted to do during the the, mm. the cabinet, cabinet on yeah. Tuesday. So I think they know what they were about to say. They know that they want to make us the puppet again. I'm going to say they're trying to make us their puppet, but trust me, we are not puppets. I'm not what minutes. did you think of the, the the minister of education? Who should have been the one? Who we were told would be the one to making to respond. Jordan. Be because because she said not, well not Jordan the, the, the minister of education yeah. yes yes he was and there. chairperson Kathy you said he will respond Fine. after he's taken a number of these questions I did was you find surprised. it odd that he yes. did not I was surprised that the minister of education did not respond to any of the questions and that that was actually taken over by the prime minister. Um, first of all, I found it very disrespectful of the Prime Minister to arrive half an hour late. Um, we started a few minutes late, and he was even later, which from the beginning told me that this was not a priority for the Prime Minister. And then he shoved the Minister of Education out of the way, and he took over at the end to give his views. And he rambled on about how difficult it was for him to as a young man, to get educated. Had to carry fish on his head and sell fish just to find $18 <laughs> to He's pay for school fees. <laughs> to his, to his, his yeah, old but age. We don't want to hear that. No, we but, don't wanna but this is important because he knows the struggle. So he, he is supposed to, to understand how difficult it is to get educated. He once knew the struggle. He doesn't know the struggle now. He doesn't know it now. He is okay. bypassed us, and he is now kicking us to s for us to stay in the barrel. Exactly. He's gotten out of the barrel, but he's refusing to help anybody else out of the barrel. He is deliberately kicking the rest of us so that we can stay in the barrel. Mm. He doesn't want anybody else to get educated. But, but Jonathan Mahini, you seem to be taking the Minister of Education off the hook. He had an obligation to respond. Yes, yes. He did. He was there. He, he heard <coughs> each and he every one. He called people, in fact. In fact, yeah. he met parents and, and administrators a couple of days before, yes. called them into his yeah. ministry, and you would expect that he would have, he was taking a personal interest. See? But that's just a plum. I'm under the impression, <laughs> looking at the, the Minister of Education, Dr. Rupert Rupnarain, on Friday, he looks frail, he looks his age, he looks like his office is a huge burden on him. Maybe he should start thinking about retiring because he has now gone down in history as being the first minister of education to allow a tax to be imposed on education in this country. He will go down with a, with a very bad yeah, reputation as being the very first minister to allow a tax on education in Guyana. 
I don't know if that is what is worrying him and he has no voice in cabinet, but he certainly doesn't look the old firebrand that I knew many years ago when the WPA were a vibrant party. He certainly doesn't look the, the same old man, the same guy. The, the, the Prime Minister was at pains to say this was a cabinet decision. Um, almost suggesting that it was unanimous. Mm -hmm. From what you've been hearing, mm -hmm. was this decision really unanimous or, or would there have been people in that cabinet room yesterday who would have been uncomfortable with this matter continuing maybe sometime next year? I think there, there, there are members there that was uncomfortable. They know in their heart that this is not right. And they want to, I, I think they should have come out and say it, you know, but I don't know why. I don't know why, and I'm asking why you didn't come out and say, to save your children, you know, or your future children, the future doctors and lawyers and stuff like that, you know? What I would like to know, and first of all, y y you may have to understand how a cabinet or a board works. <laughs> you, you meet as a body, but whatever decision you take, you can't necessarily go outside you, against no, it. No, no, no. You have you have collective responsibility. Yeah, that does mean right. that does mean together. That's right. Mr. Nagamoto mm -hmm. was clearly giving the impression the every this was a unanimous Mas decision. Yeah. Collective responsibility and unanimity are two different, different things altogether. Mm. I don't think it was a unanimous decision because sitting there Friday at the consultation and watching Mrs. Hughes, Mrs. Cathy Hughes, the expression on her face mm -hmm. was painful. It was painful, and I know Cathy, it was painful to see what she was going through at that point in time. So I don't think that she personally would be in favor of VATA and education. I don't see a lot of other ministers being in favor of VATA on, on education, but I do see one or two powerhouses within the cabinet who are in favor of the VATA on education shoving it down the members of the cabinet that this is something that has to continue regardless of whether you like it or not regardless of what effect it has on the country or not this is because this is my pet project and it will have to go through yeah. i can see that taking place within a cabinet are you uncomfortable for naming names and who do you think w w were heavyweights in the cabinet who were willing to shove this down the throat of their colleagues well let's Let's look, to me, the chief bottle washer here, Kokum bottle washer, would be the Minister Jordan. Mm. He's the man that devised the VATA on education. The ultimate responsibility, <coughs> excuse me, the ultimate responsibility lies with the Ministry of Finance, not the Ministry of Education. Education dictates policy. Finance dictates financial policies. VATA on education is a financial policy. Right. So... The baby lies in Mr. Jordan's arms. But you, you only make that as a functional argument. We haven't heard Mr. Jordan say as much yes. as Nagamoto said last Friday. Well, this is what I'm coming to. Okay. So on. we have Mr. Jordan come up with the idea and he's... Functionally. Functionally pushing it there. Yes. It goes to cabinet and I would assume that there are people who are trying to say, no, that can't work. That can't work. But then on the other side, there are people saying... Well, why not? This is a good way to make money. Mm. This is a good way to keep people in the barrel. Mm -hmm. And it might well be that the Prime Minister, from his attitude on Friday, is one of those people. It might very well be that the Prime Minister is one of those people who are trying and doing their utmost to ensure that VAT remains on education. Well, let me let me ask you this question, Ms. McCann. Mm. The one of the parents ask a very pointed question to the, to the people up on the stage. Mm -hmm. Does your party mm. support VAT individually? Because you had, you had WPA, mm -hmm. you had AFC, you had two AFC, and, well, it was expected as someone from the APNU. That question was asked, does your party support that and the person i think was miss rogers yes she asked a follow-up question 
even if your party has not fully considered it, do you personally support Vatan education? Mm -hmm. Did they answer that question? No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. But, it, but it's, difficult, it's difficult for a, a minister to be put on the spot like that. What would be a bet, what is the better question is, what does your party represent on this matter? Well, that was the first question. That was the first question. No, but you see, you see, one could easily have said, well, look, my party has not discussed it. Mm. Sure. They could have said that. Sure. But the next question is, are you, di look, there are some matters that have got to appeal to conscience. Yeah. Vatan education. Now, Rupert Rupin Ryan, mm. as you said, uh, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's a most important point you're making, that Rupert Rupin Ryan, who has built a tremendous reputation right. on education, mm. yes. is the person who will go down in history exactly. as having sat by yeah. whilst VAT was imposed on education. Yeah. Now, and so that was a question. Yeah. There's a, t you see, you can say, look, collectively, I accept responsibility, yeah. mm. but I have a personal position on this matter. Exactly. I, I am a member of cabinet. If I don't like the decision, I can leave. Exactly. If I feel that strongly yeah. about it. Mm. None of them none of them has had the courage. Mm -hmm. Now I want to say this. I've heard that the AFC is I, I, mm -hmm. I support what you said that the Prime Minister mm -hmm. is one of the firmest advocates mm -hmm. for the retention of Baton education. Mm -hmm. But I understand he was not alone. Now, is that what AFC is all about? Are you saying that other members of the AFC also support the Vatan education? That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. That would be very surprising to me. Well, did it surprise you that Moses Nagamudu? Yes, but it seems now like everything I expected from the AFC has gone out the window because they have now turned into a, a set of people that I don't know that I don't know anymore. Before the election, there were this body that we hoped would keep a check on the APNU, particularly the PNCR arm of the APNU, and to ensure that we get good governance. Mm. But so far, the AFC has failed miserably in ensuring good governance in this country. They've joined the coalition, which was done to get rid of uh, the governing government at the time, the PTP. But what have they done since then? As individual ministers, they might be successful in their own ministry, but as a body, have they put a check on good governance? Have they stopped... Or put a check on bad governance, you mean? Or, or bad, bad governance, sorry. Or have they stopped corruption in the government? I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. And I can name a few instances which are blatant. Hmm. So I don't think the AFC is doing what we expect them to do. Now, uh, now if, I'm, if it's correct that they're the ones that are advocating for the Vatan education, this is a huge disappointment. Well, of course, they, they are a majority in cabinet. <laughs> Sorry, a minority in cabinet. Yeah. But as you said, they could have been the, the great intellectual Action. thinkers. Mm. Along with the WPA, which is Rupert Rupnoin. But... That intellect is not showing out. That intellect, the impression that comes across here is that most of them are just enjoying the perks of the office and not performing as they're supposed to be. What, yeah, whatever they put there for, they're not doing yeah. anything. Did you, did you find that the statement issued after cabinet, I go back to this question, the statement issued after cabinet was so much like what Moses Nagamoto said. It's almost yeah. as though I am sending you to read this, this speech. That's what we were saying. It, it, it seemed as if everything was decided before the before consultation. Yeah. So decided. what's the purpose of having the consultation decision. when you've already made a decision, decision. and Minister Nagamoto was just saying what the decision was in advance? The words are, the words are pretty much word for word. How relevant was the Prime Minister's speech to the issues that were raised by the audience? 
for me, um, it doesn't make any sense. What he, what, what, what he, what, what he told the people that day, is not what we wanted to hear, right? No, but did he answer the questions? No, none of the questions, none, nothing at all. We didn't have any information like saying that you know what, g you have a solid rock, something to lean on, you know, that um, oh maybe next week or in the next cabinet I guarantee you something mm. is going to happen nothing happened no well it's, it, I, I think and I don't want to appear to be it's it's not whether he, he he came there to make a promise but he surely had a duty he's not to respond to the issues that yeah. were raised by the people exactly yeah. but which he, he didn't. deliberately didn't do he didn't they deliberately did not do that I mean it was almost insulting yeah. to hear his re to hear is absolutely irrelevant and nonsensical mm. response. Which is why people left. Mm. Which is why How people got up and walked How did he feel? Because here it is, pe suggestions had come from the board. These are some of the yeah. things you can do. Yeah. These are some of the consequences. You're going to lose foreign exchange. Yeah. That's what, we had a lot of foreign students that day. Yep. They come here and pay foreign. We are worried about the, the, the um, depreciating value of the Ghana dollar relative to foreign currency. And here we, we're making it more difficult to earn yeah. foreign currency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let, me, let me put it a, a little different way. They're expecting $350 million from VAT on education for 2017. Right, $350 million. Assuming that all, let us say there are 15,000 students in private education. Assuming that all 15,000 students remain in private education. Dr. O'Toole said that 12% of his students have already dropped out. Mm. Therefore, your tax collection is already starting to dwindle. Yes. By the end of 26, 2017, when parents can no longer afford to finish paying, they may, they may have struggled to finish paying until the end of June term. Yes. And then what happens come September when they don't register for a private school? Mm. They put this child into a public school. Your VAT base reduces, let's say it reduces by 50%. You're not looking at $350 million anymore. You may be looking at $150 million. Is $150 million worth fighting and killing and, and shoving people around for? Well, practically destroying an education part, of system. part of your next generation yeah. in terms mm -hmm. of your education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because can you guarantee that the public school is going to give you what the private school is giving you? No. Can you guarantee the public school can accept the 15,000 students that they well, have well in private school? It's, 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 it, it. it's more than 15. It's more than 15. It's it's well more like about 26,000. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's more like about 26,000 over 20. Students. There is absolutely no way. I mean, if if Mr. Nagamutu had paid attention to what people were saying. Yeah he would have realized that, look, you know what? These people are actually doing, in the private school, they were doing the state a favor. favor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. that, you know, you know what struck me? I'm old enough to know free independence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when we were a colony. And do you know private schools actually receive grants from the government when that is in, before we had independence? Right. Nagamoto is a man who ought to know that. But a lot of things that he ought to have remembered, he seems to have conveniently forgotten. He seems to have conveniently forgotten how difficult it was for people like himself, poor people, struggling to make ends meet, mm. to get a proper education so that they can get out of poverty. But he seems to have conveniently forgotten all those hardships. No, he's so just, he he just reminding us about his hardships. Well, to, but to what extent? He's not doing anything to make life easier for no, us. He's he reminding us about his hardship so that he feels that instead of pay, we have to pay the 14% VAT so that if not, then we won't catch fish and we can get to pay the 14% VAT. No, what he, the impression that I'm coming, that's coming across to me is mm -hmm. he's a crab in a barrel. Mm. I got out of the barrel. I'll make sure that I'll do everything possible for the rest of you to stay in the barrel. Mm -hmm. I don't want any more of you to get out of that barrel. Mm. Stay in there. And he said it Friday that he carried fish to sell fish to find $18 to pay, for, for, to pay for schooling. But 
that's eighteen dollars. Then work it, did it torture? Well, but that's not the point. It's, not it's how hard he had to do it do to it. get an education. Mm -hmm. Now he's now he's trying to to make sure that people punish mm. to but, get an education. But you know, you know what I found extremely revealing. I thought when I went there, um, I was kind of persuaded to go. When I went there, I thought we will hear the the usual George Song middle class mm -hmm. complaining people. We had people from Linden. Yeah. You had a woman who come from the interior. Yeah. Yes. You had international students who were telling us the real story of what happens out there in the real world. Nagamoto does not, did, did not care what this said, did he? No. Uh, he did not respond to a single one of them. None, not a bit. Mr. Not Nagamoto a seems to be enjoying life as prime minister. He is arrived. And he has, in my opinion, he has nothing left to offer. What is eighteen dollars, Mr. Sh he's you just pick up the He's just enjoying whatever he has to enjoy, and maybe he might be thinking that this is his last hurrah, <laughs> so he's going to let things run. However, he just comes across as a man who no longer cares about the people of Guyana. One of the first points that were made at the, um, at the consultation, I, I, I think Dr. Brian O'Toole from School of Nations, mm -hmm. he said, because this is, what, this is part of the mantra mm -hmm. from the government, look, private schools not paying their taxes. Mm -hmm. And O'Toole said, well, if you, if you think we're not paying our taxes, come and you have a right to come and inspect our books. Yes. And go tax those who are not tax compliant. Yeah. Again, he didn't respond to that. No. How could Nobody they respond did. to that? Nobody did. Nobody GRA did. is the enforcement arm of the government, the financial enforcement arm of the government. If they know, if GRA knows, and they are supposed to know which school is not paying taxes, which school is not tax compliant, go after them. Hmm. By all means, every business, every private business has a duty to pay corporate taxes. The yes, assuming, assuming they're, they're... They make a profit. No, that also assumes they're a company. If you're not a company, if you're not an incorporated entity, you pay income tax. tax. If you're... Fine. You now become a sole proprietor. You pay through your own personal income yes. tax. But that is GRA's responsibility. Absolutely. I can't sit here and say whether a private school is paying tax or not unless the owner of the private school tells me that is GRA. GRA has that information. They are the ones that have, that have to go out there and ensure that all of these private schools pay their taxes. The other thing is, there are a lot of schools under the umbrella of religious schools. Now, the government, this is where the Minister of Education has to come in. The Minister of Education will have to decide on a policy. Do we allow private religious schools to be charging fees and what are they doing with the fees that they charge? Do they, do they pay teachers better than other schools? Do they do corporate social responsibility? Do they give back to society? Do they have scholarships for poor students to come in? How many scholarships do they offer if they do that? Do they give 50 scholarships to poor, poor students? Come and study at us for free. The other students who are paying will pay for your fees, mm. which is allowable. In my day, that, that happened. Well, some people did not. Uh, some people got... Um, scholarships. Wa wave learning got scholarship. I got a partial scholarship from a private school. I got, oh. a, I got a full blown scholarship. Well, I wasn't that bright. I could only get a partial. Mm -hmm. I went to St. Stanislaus yeah. College on a scholarship from Common Entrance. Yeah. Oh. Students who did not make the grade paid. And their parents paid for me. Yes. That's what the scholarship is all about. So why I'm hoping that Religious private schools are doing that today? I don't know. But, but again, we need to make this clear. Whether you are a for-profit or, or not-for-profit, that still applies. So the fact is, even those you're talking yeah. about who might be giving scholarships and not, um, but collecting from half yes. to help the other, they've still, they've still got to pay that. That still applies. Yeah, because the school doesn't pay that. Mm -hmm. The school is a conduit 
for the vat. All you have to do to get to the tre is threshold of 50 million and you got to charge that. Yes. Okay. You know, what struck me as well, a number of ill-informed things that I would have expected three cabinet ministers to be a little bit more informed, a little bit more alert. We heard them say, these private schools are not registered. There is no bloody reason, there is nothing, no law that says they must register. register. Where is this law that's <laughs> causing them to register? These guys don't know that. Ministers of the government don't know elementary things about our education system. Well, it just goes to show the amount of interest they put into their job. Mm. If the Minister of Education does not know that, it means that he's deficient in his job. Something as basic as that. Does a private school have to register? Or no. do they not the have to register? No, the answer is no. No, no, I'm saying he's supposed to know. Absolutely. Do they register or do they not have to register? He's supposed to know that. Mm. If he doesn't know that, that's the fundamental of his job. But, but you see, why I raise that question is that that's one of the things we've been hearing. We've been hearing, look, these schools are not registered with the Ministry of Education. We're hearing that these schools can absorb the VAT. Why, why would schools absorb the VAT? Why would you ask a private business to absorb a consumer tax? That's like asking, that's like asking Guyana stores to absorb the VAT every time I buy, buy something, something from Guyana stores. But that, that's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> no, but you know, you know what makes it so much more idiotic? They are asking private schools to take a cut mm -hmm. of 12.3% mm -hmm. of their income because when you take, when you absorb that 14% VAT, yeah. it, it cuts your income yeah. by 12.2%, not, not exactly 14. Yeah. Yet this government is being asked to give up 0.25, less than a quarter percent, or one dollar out of every $400. And the government is not willing to do that. See? That is why it comes back It comes back to what I was saying, that the Minister of Finance, who is the man responsible for the financial, the financial policies of the country, has to be strongly behind the VAT on education because this is something that he should know. This is something that he can decide that 0.25% is something that we can find in other ways we can find that money in other ways. Maybe, but uh, again, and I don't want to appear, I, I know Minister Jordan, I, I, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're kind of colleagues. Um, maybe he was saying, look, we can do it. But somebody says, ma'am, but look, if you do it, we're going to look weak. So don't let me do it. But so in other words, the political image mm -hmm. is more important, is more important than, than education and the people. That's what I was going to say. Well, they might be in for a surprise because 2020 is coming. Uh -huh. And by 2020, I mean <laughs> the next general elections is coming. <laughs> and it's coming like a locomotive bearing down on the track. Before you blink, it's going to be 2020. And if they continue the way they're going, they've alienated so many of the people that got them into power. Remember this government that only won by a $5,000 by a 5,000 person majority, yeah. which is one seat. S slightly under that, yes, yes. It's not a huge amount. Mm. So when they alienate people who voted for them, the undecideds who were fed up of the corruption under the PPP, now decided we're gonna give somebody else a new chance. And now you're alienating those people by doing similar things and imposing ridiculous taxes like this. You can't expect to be back in power next time. But, but I pointed out that Maybe, maybe the Minister of Finance was saying, look guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm go I have a good team at the Ministry of Finance, I'm going to find this 350 million. But somebody, th these political, w politically wise men said, no, 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 don't do that, Winston, we're going to look weak. Well, then it makes the Minister of Jordan looks weak. Because he should stand up and say, no, I can find the money elsewhere. Let us, let us save the punishment no, 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 but that, that, of, right, the, on, of the parent. 
Let us take the burden off of the parent for paying part on education. I will find the money elsewhere. I will send GRA against all the non-compliant companies because he has the authority to do that as a minister. He can say, GRA, what's going on? What is happening? Why are these companies not paying taxes? Go after the non-compliant taxes. Yes, his, his, I think his budget director yeah. is, is a member of the g revenue board, yeah. the governing board of the revenue authority. Yeah. So there's no question, um, even on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm sure they can pick up the phone. He wouldn't, he wouldn't interfere in the day-to-day -day day administration, no. but he can certainly say, look, our, the policy of our government is we cannot let any sector, any group of taxpayer off the hook. You have to treat all of on them the same, fairly same on the same level, go after all of them. Yeah. And because of the current financial situation in, of the country, you need to make, an, make it urgent. You need to put a priority on that because they're saying that they're cash trapped. This government is on record as saying that they're cash trapped. There was some joke the other day about reusing envelopes. If they're so cash trapped and they want it, they have to tell ministries to reuse envelopes. Why are they not going after the people who are not paying taxes? Mm -hmm. and that tax comes I have a suggestion for them. If they're that, if they claim to be that cash trapped, ministers, why don't you just all take a fifty percent cut in pay? That's one sure way of telling the. the that's one sure way of telling the population. We are in serious trouble. Do you think they're going to do that? Oh, no. Oh, no. They will never do that. Do you think they want to struggle like how we are struggling? No. no. But no so now the, the government has spoken. The, the people spoke. The government did not hear. It's clear that they did not hear. They listened, mm -hmm. but they didn't hear. I'm not even Sorry. Sure. I'm not they even heard. sure they listened. They heard, but, but they, they didn't, didn't listen. listen. That's two different things yeah. altogether. They heard, but they didn't listen. Um, parents are now forced to Good. live with this value added tax of 14%. What do you think, Ms. McCann, you're a, you're a parent. What do, as a parent, how do you adapt to this dictate now mm -hmm. that, look, you either pay this 14% or you find somewhere for your child to go to school? Uh, it's very hard. As a single parent, I am a single parent, mother of two. One goes to Maine, one goes to IBE. And it's hard to find the, the, the term money. Now then I have to find 14% added to that, which is 6000 Three hundred dollars more. I have to pay fifty one thousand three hundred for my daughter. Then where am I going to find the extra money? I'm doing two sets of jobs actually. I'm doing cake catering, and I do floral. You're doing some advertising on this program too. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Go on. You know, so it's it's like, you know, it's it's hard. What I'm, about I'm parent? What about parent that have? Not all that I'm having. There are parents, you know, that can't, okay, I have, I'm doing this, this, this job. There are parents that are doing those domestic. When they do this domestic half, half day here, they go next half day there, you know, to a next, mm -hmm. next company or a next home. So now they, they're trying now to say, okay, I have to pay this, if it's 45,000 or 60,000 for my child to go to school. Why are they sacrificing their th themselves? Is because for a better get education for their children, right? They wanted the best for their children. They they don't want oh well, I go to the, the 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 private the public school and come home with no homework. M um, baby, what you did today in school? Mommy, nothing. Um, are you, for real? That's how I will respond. For real? And he would like um, yeah. Um, I had to put my head on the desk. Teacher tell me that um, to spare cat, dog, and rat. At the age of seven, I had to take him out. At the age of seven. Now my daughter is the age of four, and she could say two times table. She could spell her name. She could write. She could. It's amazing. It's amazing what she could do, mm -hmm. right? But it's hard now that you have this additional 14%. Where am I going to find that? 
amount of money from? Swami Akshavananda, who runs the, the, the school, yes. he was selling some fairly graphic pictures as well mm. of the of the hardships of parents. Yes. These are rural people. Yes. They, they can't, you may be able, you live in a good population center. Mm. Some of these people find it extremely mm. difficult just to extremely. send this children's school on the existing arrangement. Uh, yes. It's yeah. very hard. Very, very, very hard um, for some parents. Thi this, is, this is what surprises me with people like Prime Minister Nagamutu, because he came from that era. He came through that. Yes. He's your favorite pre um, politician, I noticed, <laughs> Jonathan. Uh, he, he's the one that asked us to sympathize with him because he carried fish, selling fish, mm. to find $18 to pay for school education. <laughs> now he's kicking us. Exactly. He's telling the same, the same parent who is trying to send their child to school that, hey, I'm going to make it extra difficult for you. Yes. I'm going to put obstacles in he your made, way. He made it true, so we, we can do it the same. Tell me something. I, I mean, try to put, your, put yourself in his um, the prime minister's head. Yeah. Why, at a forum <coughs> like that, mm. people come to tell you about their hardship today? You go in and tell them about you, ca you carry fish on your head. Seven, 60 years ago. What, 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 could, what could be the motive? You seem to do a bit of psychology. What? He's out of touch with reality. <laughs> I think the Prime Minister is seriously out of touch with reality. He doesn't understand what the people in Ghana are going through at the moment. Mm. And I don't think it's only the Prime Minister. Because I think our President has a lot to blame for this as well, too. Because if the President, who comes across as a very humane person, is also a very intellectual person, having a honors in history. history. He's a historian. Hmm. He doesn't see that as leader of the country and as leader of his cabinet, he can sway his cabinet to say, hey, this Vatan education is not morally right. But he hasn't taken a stand in that department. So a lot of this blame also has to lie in his lap, because the buck stops at his desk. At the end of, as a, the he is the one that says yes, we can go through with it. No, we can't go he through. He chairs with cabinet meetings. He, he chairs it. Constitution, he's, he's constitutionally, he's he chairs cabinet meetings. He's and he's also the president of the country. Exactly. So he can he can ask his cabinet, Minister of Finance, we have to find another way to raise the three hundred and fifty million dollars. Or no, no, no. Hold on, Jonathan. He could say to the Minister of Finance, look, I want you to do two things. Tell me if you can find $350 million. Mm -hmm. Go and look. You've got a great team at the Ministry of yeah. Finance. You ought to be able to do it working with the GRA. And if you can't do that, tell me where I can cut $350 million. Exactly. It's two sides. It's two sides. Yeah. Where can we cut expenditure so that we don't need to put it on the parents the punishing parents who are doing struggling to find money for school. school yes. And you know sure. what is amazing, and uh, as you all have pointed out, it is so short-sighted. This is what the p. This is how the private schools are doing the function of the yeah. public schools. Yeah. When I I did some some numbers, I had to look. Swami Akshayananda asked mm. me to get up some numbers for him, out of the budget. It is costing so much more in the public sector mm -hmm. to educate a child than in the private sector. Seriously? Absolutely. Yes. So they should be willing to send the children to private Absolutely. schools? Absolutely. It is better. Yeah. But these guys have never looked at the figures. Maybe but they looked at it but don't understand don't it. Understand. Quite frankly, sometimes you wonder. Yeah, I have to you wonder. really, really wonder. They're I wonder if things. any of them, if any of them, I've been asked, mm -hmm. but even by politicians, can you help me to get some figures? Friends, you have passed this budget. Yeah. You have voted on the estimates and you say, aye. <laughs> and you don't know what you did. Are you that dumb? Apparently, yes. <laughs> they are that dumb. Apparently. Because they are, it's a collective mind thing. Dumbest I'm a member of a particular party. I have to vote however that party votes. I don't have a conscience. I have to stifle my conscience to vote along party lines. 
we see it in the city council. We see it in the we see it in the cabinet. It's ridiculous. But it's interesting you raise this business about city council, mm. and you straddle the parking meter yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> the city council said we need money, and that's why we have to have this parking Parking. arrangement, in addition to regulating the flow of traffic. The government has suspended Mm -hmm. the contract. It didn't sympathize, it didn't empathize, Mm -hmm. it didn't try to understand, it didn't try to to consult with city council. It says, no, you must be starved of that money. Isn't this an inconsistency in the government as to how it deals dealt with the parking meter people and how it dealt with education? There's a difference between the two. Actually, there's a big difference between the two. The parking meters scenario had 2,000 people on the road protesting every Thursday, making a strong statement against the parking meters. When you look at the protests held at VAT against education, you have 100, 150 at the most. Today we had what? 40, 50 people? No, 25. 25 people today. And the government fighting. looks at us and asks, if you're complaining so much, where are the parents who... No, Jonathan, I must take you up on this. I was talking about the government's thinking. Shouldn't the government have some moral basis, moral yardstick, when it makes a decision on city council or it makes a decision on education, it uses the same kind of logic. But the pressure on the government is different. The pressure on the government is different. The pressure on the parking meters is huge. 2,000, 2,500 people out on the road. The pressure on VAT on education is, is small. It's only, at the most we've had is about 100 people, 120 people. Because parents sit back and expect the few of us to fight their battles for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm very annoyed about parents for that. Because they're the ones, not the student, they're the ones who have to find the money to pay the VAT. It is their children who will end up punishing because they may well have to take their child out of the private school and put him into the public system. Is it that the parents, have, despite all what you've been saying, maybe the parents are saying, look, I'm comfortable if the government say we got to do this, we got to do this. But that is, that is stupid. That's a sheep mentality. But how else do you explain it? How else do you explain, look, you've got schools within the vicinity Mm. of where the protests Mm -hmm. were taking place. You had on Friday a number of schools and they were all, everybody was gung-ho and and galvanized. And today what happened? Nobody shows up. Very few turned up. So the point is this, and you know, Swami Aksharananda has been very un- understanding. He's bent over backward to explain President Granger's position, trying to separate President Granger from Minister Jordan, which is an unrealistic thing to do. How do you separate the two? Well, Swami Aksharananda tried to do that. He cannot. Even if he tried, it cannot happen. But I have, I have a scenario that in the class that I'm in, in my in the private school that I'm attending, approximately half of the class, which is about 35 students, half of that is about 17 or 18 students, work within the public sector. And I've spoken to each one of them, why don't you come out and join us in the protest? And the answer I normally get is, Jonathan, I support you, bro. But I work for government, and I can't be seen out there protesting. It's my job on the line. It tells me that these guys, if they are seen protesting against the government for what is considered a fundamental right, they will be fired. They will be dismissed from their jobs. That, to me, is astounding because it tells me that this government is no better than the last government in terms of victimization of of employees. And I find that extremely surprising. It should not be. So 
the, the reasons why parents are not supporting in any significant number, um, the, the protest which I think uh, has been admirably led mm -hmm. by a small group of persons. How, how do you get them on board or, or, wha or what do you do? do you just throw your hands up and say, look, we got to live with this. We are sheep. No, you go, you go. I, I think they want us to do what they want. They want this 40% to come out, but they don't want to get up from them ass to help them come out and fo focus that, you know what, um, let me let me come out and show my gratitude, you know, that uh, this is what I want. Well, it's not gratitude, it's no. just... Uh, it's yeah. No, it's no uh, or show your support, your, yeah. sh your support, actually, that we want your support. Come out, s oh, man, we can't be this this person fighting for you and you sit down on your butt home watching me. Come out and say, okay, one hour of your, your leisure time. That's all we ask for, one hour of your time. And you can't give us that. So then what are we fighting for? One of the things we can do is to ask the private schools, is to ask the private schools if they can do a survey of the parents because they, they have access to the parents. But don't forget you had a petition of over 15,000 people Great. And, and the what cabinet has completely ignored it. Yeah. Again, Nagamoto didn't, wasn't there perhaps mm. to hear people say that. Mm. But that... That petition has been torn up, thrown in the waste paper basket, sent to the incinerator, burnt, wherever it's gone. It's <laughs> gone. But what I'm saying is that first, for we probably need to get the survey done for the parents as to why are they not coming out. What are the problems involved are they with them coming out? Are they scared to show up on a picket line because of their job? I'm not going to ask anybody to give up the job to, f to be f dismissed because of this. But there are parents who can come out, who are just not coming out. You if know, the husband is working, why can't the wife, why come, can't out? The wife come out? But, but you I, know, I, I but they're making so much stupid excuses. These are excuses that is not meant to be. That it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will relax. <laughs> Careful about your language. Yes. You know, you know what surprises <laughs> me as well. Look, you got sixty-five members of parliament. Yeah. Sixty-five. 33, 32. It's actually 68. There are three non voting. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 68. <laughs> you know, none of these people feel strongly enough about this matter. You have a shadow minister of education. I think she was there yes. on the first day. On the first day, yes. Yeah. Yeah, she what was else? There. What else? What about the trade union movement? Where is the leadership in this country, both from the government? and the opposition, and civil society. We suffer, we suffer from good leaders in Guyana, mm. particularly political leaders, because they, they see themselves on a pedestal above everybody we else. We probably suffer from bad leaders. We do. <laughs> we suffer for want of good yeah. leaders. Yeah, we yeah. do suffer from a want of good leaders. And it, it shows, because this is an issue this is an issue that transcends race, politics, culture, everything. This is something that a nation should be up in uproar about, VAT on education. Because the only way a nation improves is through education. People must be educated to improve a country. What, what, what was your reaction? Uh, how did you feel when people walked out on the Prime Minister. Why do you think they walked out? What, what, what triggered the walking out? Of him not making sense. Well, she probably walked out earlier. <laughs> um, they wanted to walk out early. I, for one, wanted to walk out. As soon as he talk, start, start talking about the, 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 the fishing thing and the for eighteen dollars and stuff. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear, are you going to take out the fourteen percent on education? That's what I want to hear. That's what I go there for. Even if you don't want to tell me that, give me something to rely on when you go to cabinet Tuesday. But you didn't. Why do you think? Why you didn't? Do you think you'd walk out? People 
Peter walked out because what he was saying was totally irrelevant to what why we were there. Okay. And he he had already conveyed the impression that it was a foregone conclusion. The decision had already been made that this this was just a this was just a formality that we were going through to say that there was some consultation done. They were just trying to hoodwink us. You know, and that was so disappointing because after the consultation, I spoke to a couple of politicians, both government, opposition. Mm -hmm. I said that day was a demonstration of Guyanese at their best. Yeah. Here it was, you had, we are told, representatives from cabinet coming to meet mm -hmm. with the people. The people spoke genuinely, mm -hmm. they spoke sensibly, they spoke feelingly from the heart. Mm -hmm. You couldn't help but be moved by the woman, I think she said she's a Filipino. Filipino, yeah. You know, you couldn't help by the, from the Nigerian student or the Indian student India from India. Or the Jamaican that works in the mortuary. Or the Jamaican uh, oh, works yes. in a mortuary to supplement his yeah. income. Yeah. You couldn't help but be moved by the, ad when the mm. administrators told you about some of the experiences on a day-to-day -day basis. And yet, somehow, in, clo in responding, the Prime Minister lost a major opportunity. Let me put it this way. If you look at the invitation that was sent out, the invitation <laughs> went specifically, specifically, owners and operators of private schools. They did never asked for parents. Did you need Did you need the cultural center to meet? Or, or, or only, no, only. but I'm saying the invitation yes. ignored parents, and it's the parents who pay for it. Mm. So that, from the very beginning, told me that they are not interested in the, the stakeholder, the major stakeholder, which is the parent. They are interested in telling the schools that they must absorb the VAT for the parent, which is never going to happen. They, ne they are never interested. They have not been interested in how we feel the, the punishment that we go through to raise Struggle. funds to send children to private school. You know what I noticed as well? And viewers, please understand, I was there, I saw it, I feel it. I feel for this. The audience was more informed than the than the cabinet mem people, yeah. yes. and that is th that is that is frightening. Yeah. Here are people who make decisions of on two hundred fifty million on the two hundred fifty million dollars budget, yeah. and don't have a basic understanding of reality. Yeah. They're worse than Trump. It seems so. It seems so, and it's very disappointing to know that. That is how they are. But that's what they're all about. If they can come ill prepared to a consultative meeting like that, where else do they go ill prepared to? What other meetings do they go ill prepared to? It's frightening. It is frightening to think that that is how our government operates. You call it frightening, I call it scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. Where do we go from here? Fears. Where do we go from here? I think we got one minute, according to the operator. Where do we go from here? We got to sit back know. and revise some strategies as to how to go about it. Mm. Our protests have certainly been diminishing, mm. but by no means will it be forgotten. Um, we just got to revise a little bit more to keep somehow find pressure to put on our government that they will be able to Revise. Are you sure, sorry, are you sure this time around? I'm because not prepared trust to me, give up. I am drained. I am totally drained. I'm disappointed in these parents. If you are saying that you're against the VAT, come out, man. Yeah. Come out, though. I don't want to hear your words telling me. I, that cannot give me nothing. Let's Tell get me. bodies out on exactly. the picket line. Exactly. <laughs> Show me your face, yeah. and that's what I want to see. That but if you can't give me that, if you cannot give me that, well then, you're, to you're telling me that you are with the VAT. That Ms. you're for the VAT. You're for the VAT, exactly. Yeah. Ms. Mahini Makan, parent, Mr. Jonathan Yearwood, a student, thank you once again. Thank, thank you for, for bearing on Play here. Talk. Um,
I know, I know it's a, it's always an uphill struggle. <laughs> struggle by definition is not easy. It's, it's never easy. easy. It's so, um, if it was easy, it would never be, be called a struggle. struggle. Yeah. <laughs> so um, keep it up. Good luck. <laughs> Operators and viewers, thank you. Good night. And I'll see you next week. Complete your loved one's graveside with a beautiful custom-designed headstone. Our skilled staff can design headstones with...